So we're gonna get started everyone. Uh, so thank you all for being here this evening um, and welcome to the presentation um, and well, session on the real Han Mulan and her relevance for now. Um, on behalf of the HER DU committee, I want to thank you all for being here and taking part in this 26th annual HER DU conference. My name is Eden and I serve on the logistics committee um, and I'm honored to be here with you all and excited. I'm actually pretty, pretty excited for this presentation myself. I've been looking forward to this. And in the meantime, I want to introduce you to our today's team um, who this does take a village to put on this conference. So on today's Zoom, we have Kamia and Maddie who are our HER DU volunteers and our um, IT service member who is helping us with the video media services, um, Tremaine. So should anything come up on Zoom, if you need any tech help or anything regarding the HER DU conference in general, feel free to send us a chat and we'll help you out. Um, for any questions we received today, um, like using the chat, we'll be using a strategy called progressive stacking. Um, and this is a technique used to give marginalized voices a chance to speak, um, particularly in an environment where there's a dominant group present, um, which means that if you choose to self-identify as belonging to a marginalized racial or ethnic group, um, we ask that you, uh, when you put your question in the chat, we ask that you put a little asterisk next to your question so that your question can be prioritized. Um, you aren't required to self-identify, it's just an option. Um, and we'll get our, we'll try our best to get to all the questions. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna let you um, be introduced to our presenter for today, uh, Christine Chow. Um, so take it away. Okay. Thank you very much, Eden, and thank you, um, everybody, even though I can't see you. And let me tell you, DU has a fabulous tech team in terms of Eden and uh, Tremaine, so thank you. So my name is Christine Cho, and I guess Eden put up the first slide. Um, so my name is Christine Cho. I am actually a graduate. Uh, I got my doctorate at DU. I'm a clinical psychologist and also a psychoanalyst of the Jungian variety. I'm really happy to speak today to you about the real Hua Mulan and her relevance for the now. Um, I am doing this presentation and for in honor of women who died, and I'll show you them on that next slide coming up. These are the women who were killed in Georgia. Uh, Xiao Jie Tan, Da Yu Fang, Sun Chun Park, Hyun Yong Grant, Sun Cha Kim, uh, Young A Yu. And um, in terms for my own answers, and expe especially for these women who have died, I would like to dedicate um, this talk uh, to them. Uh, now, I am here because of my ancestors. I will show you that on the next slide. Uh, and I am here, I'll show you the next slide, because uh, my great-grandfather Zhao, or Agong, and my next slide, great-grandmother Li Ayun, sent my grandfather, to the United States where he married my Polish grandmother and they had two sons. And that's my father in the background and my, my uncle. So they came to Meigua, which in Chinese is the beautiful country. And next here is my family in 1935 in Hong Kong, two years before my father and uh, his mother and my grandfather, that, that family left. The other um, Chinese members of the family um, did not want to go. The woman in the middle, in the dark dress, she was the young woman that you first saw. She's my great grandmother. And if we had looked at her feet, we would have seen she has bound feet, okay? And next come my Irish uh, mother and my father, and that's how I came. Okay, so that's um, so that's how I came here. So there is no evidence that there is such a woman named uh, Hua Mulan ever existed, but the myth and the ballad is still memorized 
in schools today. So next slide. And this slide, unfortunately, I didn't have Eden and Tremaine to help me. This slide is upside down. So we'll go on to the next slide. Okay, you may have heard about Mulan from the Disney movie. She provided another costume option for little girls, thanks God, but there was a lot that they didn't get in the movie. The most important, that bottom picture where she's gazing into the eyes of the handsome captain, that is not the true story. So I am going to tell you now the story of the real Hua Mulan that comes from a ballad from sixth century China that was um, written down and the emperor's story collectors collected the ballad. So let's read it through. Okay, this is how it starts. It starts in an onomatopoeic way. There's no characters, tsik tsik, and again tsik tsik. Mulan, that's, it's this, try to be the sound of the, um, the, um, weaving. Mulan weaves facing the door. You don't hear the shuttle sounds. You only hear daughter's sighs. They ask daughter who's in her heart. They ask daughter who's on her mind. No one is on daughter's mind. Last night I saw the draft posters. The Khan is calling many troops. The army list is in 12 scrolls. On every scroll, there's father's name. Father has no grown up son. Mulan has no elder brother. I want to buy a saddle and horse and serve in the army in father's place. In the East Market, she buys a spirited horse. In the West Market, she buys a saddle. In the South Market, she buys a bridle. In the North Market, she buys a long whip. At dawn, she takes leave of father and mother. In the evening camps on the Yellow River's bank. She doesn't hear the sound of father and mother calling. She only hears the Yellow River's flowing water cry, Sin, Sin. At dawn, she takes leave of the Yellow River. In the evening, she arrives at Black Mountain. She doesn't hear the sound of father and mother calling. She only hears Mount Yen's nomad horses cry, too, too. She goes 10,000 miles on the business of war. She crosses passes and mountains like flying. Northern gusts carry the rattle of army pots. Chilly light shines on iron armor. Generals die in a hundred battles. Stout soldiers return after 10 years. On her return, she sees the son of heaven. The son of heaven sits in the splendid hall. He gives out promotions in 12 ranks and prizes of a hundred thousand and more. The Khan asks her what she desires. Mulan has no use for a minister's post. I wish to have a strong camel to take me back to my home. When father and mother hear daughter is call coming, they go outside the wall to meet her, leaning on each other. When elder sister hears younger sister is coming, she fixes her rouge facing the door. When little brother hears elder sister is coming, he wets the night, quick, quick for pig and sheep. I open the door to my east chamber. I sit on my couch in the west room. I take off my wartime gown and put on my old time clothes. Facing the window, she fixes her cloud-like hair. Hanging up a mirror, she dabs on yellow flower powder. She goes out the door and sees her comrades. Her comrades are all amazed and perplexed, traveling together for 12 years. They did not know Mulan was a girl. The he hare's feet go hop and skip. The she hare's eyes gaze inwardly in contemplation. Two hares running side by side, close to the ground. How can they tell if I am he or she?
And that is the end. Okay, next slide. So let's talk about this. Let's amplify this and let's hear what Mulan has to tell us, especially women. So the story opens with Mulan facing outward, facing the door she is weaving. She is doing traditional women's work. However, this activity prefigures the wholeness which the story will take us. To weave is to work with the opposites, to work with thread that have been spun from fibers from the earth. It is the crossing of the warp, the woof, the warp and the woof. And you can see the union actually of feminine and masculine pr um, principles. Actually in Chinese symbolism, it's the alternation of the yin and yang. So initially, when we meet Mulan, she is being a, a dutiful daughter, weaving cloth for her family, but she is also sighing and facing the door and she has stopped weaving. This break, you don't hear the shuttle sounds, brings the family to find out what is happening. Why has Mulan sighed? What, what's going on? She must be thinking of a lover or maybe who the family will arrange for her to marry. Not so in an act of so subtle rebellion, but rebellion nonetheless, Mulan tells her family they have no idea what's going on with her. No one knows, no one is on daughter's mind. Okay, then she tells them another no for that a proper Chinese daughter would never say. She has been out at night, outside the walls and the confines of her home. You can do the next that next slide. She's gone out at night and there she has seen that the emperor is conscripting troops. Okay. I would also posit that Mulan's initial size going out at night has a twofold meaning. Yes, as Chinese have noted throughout the ages, she is being a dutiful daughter, worried about and willing to sacrifice herself for her family, but she is also went out in the moonlight, in time of the feminine, in time when our feelings come to the surface. Something has stirred in her heart. Her sighs reflect a yearning that there must be something more than just being a fa farmer's daughter, a, fa a farmer's daughter, a father's daughter, okay. So I'm not going, there are lots of things in this myth that talk about filial piety and um, uh, saving face, um, but we're not going to go into that right now. What Mulan says is that she has no older brother who in terms of the hierarchy and filial piety, which is the duty, the love, the honor you pay to your parents, that they should go in father's place. But she says, no, I've seen what the emperor wants to do. I want to buy a saddle and a horse and serve in the army in father's place. So there we have, she has a horse. And the next slide has another, a really spirited horse. So what she is doing, first she goes to the East Market to buy the horse. Um, the horse is one of the purest symbols of car the carrying of instinctual energy. That energy that you need um, uh, to support you as you go out into life. It makes the horse symbolizes the flow of life and um, it's, it's instinctual, okay? In Chinese symbolism, the east where she goes is also the direction of the dragon and fertility. So we can go to the next slide. So here are two dragons that I got when I was in China. And dragons in Chinese mythology are good. They represent the highest spiritual power. It's the divine power of change and transformation. And the color that is associated with this East is green and that's this, or blue green. And that, that's the symbol of growth, generation and um, 
a new stuff. It's also the symbolism of yang. Okay, and there's the next slide is, I just threw in Mushu because lots of people know Mushu and Ebonic speaking Mushu was almost worth the price of admission to the animated. Um, so I, I, I love Mushu. My granddaughter won't watch the new Mulan because it doesn't have Mushu. Okay. But again, women, now the next thing she goes after that um, is she goes to the West Market where she buys a saddle. The saddle will help Mulan stay seated on her instincts. It will help hold her and carry her as she embarks on this journey that will be long and arduous. And again, as women, we have to say, what holds us? What supports us? Now, in terms of the symbolism of the West, that is white. And we'll see that on the next slide. And actually the white in Asian culture symbolizes sorrow and death. So even today, white is associated with mourning and there is no bride, unless she is very westernized, would wear a white wedding dress. So what does this um, West Market, this color white remind us? That when you go on a journey, um, there will be times of sorrow and depression. Sacrifices will be required. Um, and eventually part of what the Buddhists would call and in psychologists would call, part of the ego has to die. So she goes to the West for that supportive saddle. Next, she goes to the South where she gets a bridle, okay. A bridle, um, the reins of a bridle are held by the rider. So that, that's your ego or the, your person. And you need all of your ego yourself on this journey of discovery. And yet your ego must work in connection, connection with and be able to be guided by your instincts, okay. Um, in China, the color associated um, with the South Market is red. And you can go to the next slide. Red is fire, red is power, red is celebration. Red is the color you wear on the Lunar New Year. Um, brides wear it on their wedding day. And in the next slide, you will see uh, on, at the Lunar New Year, on um, sometimes birthdays, weddings, you will be, children will be given money in red envelopes. Actually, once you're married, you don't get any more red envelopes. Then, you're, then the ba your babies get red envelopes, okay? Um, so we've got Mulan on her horse. We have her on her sa saddle. We have her holding the reins of her bridle. So most probably Mulan will have times where she must guide her horse. Oh, okay. And that's the last thing she's going to get is her whip. So right now she's got her horse and she, um, she must hold the reins lightly and loosely sometimes and let her horse and the intu her intuition guide her, okay? And holding those reins lightly will keep her on her path. But she also goes to one last market and that's the North Market where she buys a whip. Now this little whip is not like the big long Zorro whip, even though the translation says long. It's a whip that is used in Mongolia to spur the horse on, to say, come on, come on, we can do it. Black is also, um, the symbolism of the North Market is black and also black stands for dormancy and the unknown and delving into the mystery. And whenever we go on a journey, we do go into a mystery. And sometimes we go into places that are cold and fearful and chaotic, we go into winter places and that is all symbolized by the color black, okay? It's water, it's depths, okay? It's yin, actually the feminine in Chinese culture yin is symbolized by the color black. Okay, so um, now she leaves the collective and she at night she camps on the banks of the Yellow River. The Yellow River is to China what the Nile River is to Egypt. It has been called China's cradle of civilization. So here Mulan has left her father's house and set out on her heroine's journey. 
but she is still involved with the society, okay? So in the beginning of the poem, it says she camps on the banks of the Yellow River and the sounds of the river crying drown out the voices of mother and father calling. So what might they be calling? Like, Mulan, come back. Mulan, we shouldn't have let you go. Mulan, honey, honey, don't go to DU. It's too far away from home. Don't gamble there during COVID, <laughs> okay? But Mulan needs something and she goes to the depths of the waters um, to hear that cry of the waters, the cry of the river inside oneself, of course, um, to drown out those voices. So the next day, she goes and camps by Black Mountain. And again, she listens to the cries of the wild horses. You'll see those slides. There we go. Well, I've got two slides of wild horses. And the sound of the horses, again, drown out the voices of mother and father calling. Again, drown out her doubts, drown out her parents actually call, you know, calling her up on their cell phone today and saying, we never should have let you go. The neighbors are talking. You will die. You're not strong enough. You can never do this, okay? And Mulan, again, has to have those doubts um, drowned out. And that's where she listens to the wild horses. So we sometimes have to listen to the cries of an internal river, the cries of our own wild horses. Okay, now let's see what happens. Mulan is in battle. She goes 10,000 miles on the business of war. She crosses mountains and passes like flying. This is from a real live, um, live action movie made in China. And actually, the Mulan has my family's last name. I wish she were related. I don't think she is. My family's last name is kind of like Smith. So there are a couple of more pictures, I think, of Mulan. Uh, there's another drawing of Mulan. Uh, then there's, we're gonna, this is a kind of a sentimental one, maybe a Hallmark card of Mulan. We have another, I think this might be, oh, this is Crosses Mountains like flying on the business of war. Now in Chinese symbolism, when she said, they say she goes 10,000 miles on the business of war, that 10,000 translates into a lot, a lot, a lot, many, many, many miles. Mulan does not accomplish her journey in one battle. Okay, unlike the Disney movie, like she kind of like in the first animated, she sets off an avalanche and then, oops, oh, did the snow bury the bad guys? No, 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 no. 10,000 miles, our girl is 10,000 miles on the business of war. Okay, and the next slide, again, she crosses, this is from a friend of mine drew this, um, crosses mountains like flying. This part, let's see, go back to the mountains. Okay, this part of the myth tells us the story of the making of a warrior, okay? She covers many miles. During this time, Mulan must have been mentored, tutored, taught the skills of survival, okay? She is taught what is, well, we have to think about this, we have to talk about what is our war that we are engaged in? What is our struggle? What is our 10,000 mile journey? Okay, and of course we have lots of parallels with women today um, in order to survive in corporate life or in order to survive in academic life. Women in business to have to know how to strategize. You gotta learn how to write business suits. Maybe you have to wear power suits. Maybe you have to hold your own in corporate meetings with the big boys. Maybe, you know, what do you have to write to get into even, you know, what do you have to write in your college admission to get into DU? What do you have to write? Who do you have to impress to get into a graduate program, into a school of business, into the law school, and, you know, into whatever program, okay? Um, again, women in academic institutions uh, from college onward have to write along with their male colleagues, papers, defend proposals, go in front of committees, pass comprehensive exams, 
all of these things, okay? And Mulan also must have endured many hardships and many sufferings, always keeping her feminine self a closely guarded secret. Is that good or is that bad? When do you take off your armor? When do you put it on, okay? Um, now we'll go to the next slide. So this is the, the line of the myth or the ballad uh, where it says, uh, uh, chilly light shines on armor, northern gusts carry the rattle of army pots. Now I will tell you there's some controversy about this line again because the, the um, Chinese characters can be translated in many ways. But I love the translation, the, um, the gusts of winds carry the rattle of the um, army pots. Because I think what this says, in the midst of the heroic, one must cook and clean the pots. The warrior men and Mulan must do what is usually consigned to women. Even though the feminine is at the center of the poem, albeit under wraps, here the feminine daily business of life speaks out. This is kind of a tension of opposites. The nurturance of cooking, feeding, eating, caring for the wounded, burying the dead, okay? Um, taking care of our wounds is juxtaposed with the business of war, which is killing and conquest, okay? Then the next two lines, final two lines of this section are, generals die in a hundred battles. So these are from the, from the, you know, the tombs in Xi'an, the, the generals that were, these are the generals, these are the big wigs, okay? Stout soldiers return after 10 years. And that's the next slide. Okay, so what does all this mean? I think it means sometimes generals don't know everything. Sometimes your teachers don't know everything. And now what has happened after 10,000 10, miles, Mulan has come to be the head of the army because all those generals have died. And what remains are the stout soldiers who have your back as you lead. So in a sense, it is a woman stepping forward into her own life and letting, you need some stout soldiers. You need some people to have your back. You need some masculine strength, but you don't need that masculine strength telling you what to do. I, I'm from an era of certainly from the Vietnam War, where there was a famous anti-war song that went waist high in the deep muddy and the big fool said to march on. So this was about the soldiers who knew they were going to get killed in the jungle in, in Vietnam, but the, sol the generals kept telling them they had to go on. And that's true in all sorts of battles. If you've ever watched you know, Chariots of Fire about Gallipoli, Again, these are the soldiers that are sacrificed, okay? So, um, and here's another picture of Mulan. And I think there may be one more picture of Mulan. Oh, no, okay, oh, this says, okay, what this says, okay. Mulan is now at the head. She is the leader, the head general of China's army. And she has won all the wars. She has vanquished China's enemies. She has saved China. And now she goes to get her reward. The patriarchy, now back to the, back to the, back to the, there we go. We gotta, we gotta stick around for the, for the, for the, uh, this, this is the seat of power. And Mulan goes there. She goes to the son of heaven or the Khan or the emperor. And he says, Mulan, you are my most famous general. 
Anything I can offer you, I will. You have arrived, you have made it. Anything power may bestow on you, I will gladly do it. Would you like to be head CEO? Would you like university tenure? Would you like to be on the board of directors? Would you like a cabinet position? All of these things. And if you don't want that, Mulan, I will give you money. I will give you as much gold and silver as you want. Now also remember in Chinese, this goes back, this myth comes out of the Chinese psyche. So we have to remember that um, the, the, um, in China, if you get a cabinet post in the emperor, in the court of the emperor, you are set for life. You hand that post down to your members of your family for generations to come, okay? And what does Mulan say? She says, no, no, no. And now she asks, she tells the emperor what she wants. And what she wants is, okay, there we go. That's what she wants. I want to get one strong camel. This is the literal translation of the Chinese. I want to get one strong camel that is my freedom to ride to the Southern Kingdom by day and all through the night with my heart intent on return. So there is deep wisdom in this myth. And I think we must look at the meaning of her request for a camel. In addition to symbolizing stamina, which you need for the long haul, the camel also kneels to receive its load in humility. And that, so that symbolization is a symbol of humility and docility, but also remember camels spit. So Mulan's journey has encompassed her choice of two mounts. The feminine uses the swiftness of a war horse and the endurance of a strong camel that will, on the second half of her journey, reflect Mulan's inner freedom as she journeys home with her heart intent on return. This, I believe, is a, this whole myth is leading up to a symbol of transformed inner power. Okay, so now Mulan returns home. Father and mother here, mother, daughter is coming. They go outside the wall to meet her, leaning on each other. And here's elder daughter. What is elder daughter? When elder daughter hears younger sister is coming, she fixes her rouge facing the door. So elder daughter is a girly girl. And that's okay. She's in there. She's a girly girl. She's Mulan's older sister. Um, and remember, the older sister does not go on the... Um, uh, uh, journey and the younger brother is too little. So Mulan is the middle child. And we all know how often middle children feel left out. So she also represents the left out part of us. Okay. So the older sister is looking all pretty because maybe in all Mulan now is the most famous general in China and the troops have come. So maybe there's going to be a nice captain for elder daughter. Okay. Then little next slide, little brother Here's elder sister is coming and he wets his knife for, and he's going to like, there's going to be a pig and a sheep. They're going to be sacrificed. Maybe the head would be put on the ancestral altar, thanking the gods and the ancestors for Mulan's safe return. Meanwhile, everybody else is going to have this huge um, feast. So her parents are even older. And what does Mulan do? She goes in and the, the, Bala tells us she takes off her wartime gown and puts on her old time clothes. She next goes and she sits on the couch in the West Chamber and she fixes her cloud like hair. Okay, and there's, and a friend of mine um, painted this picture for me. Uh, when I was, when I was um, working on this myth. Um, and then it says, uh, she, she literally lets her hair down. She arranges her hair to her like, liking, okay? She no longer has to keep it up. It's almost like in this picture, it's like a nimbus. She doesn't have to keep it 
uh, hidden beneath a helmet. She knows her thoughts. Hair is often a symbol of our thoughts. She knows her thoughts and she knows her mind. So the symbol of hair often means life force and strength. Remember, there's a famous, um, there's a biblical story, Samson. You know, Samson cuts his hair and all his strength goes, okay? She now fixes her hair to her liking. Um, so her cloud-like hair does not represent male virility, but her own feminine perspective, hard one and all her own. And painting on um, the flower, the dabbing on of yellow flower powder. And you will see this in some Asian countries it both protects from the sun as also it's a, it's a, like a beauty stuff. Um, on one, in China, the color of yellow symbolizes the center. It's a balance yin and yang. Also in the Qing dynasty, which would be about 1500 years after that, um, only the emperor could wear yellow. So basically what I think this means is that Mulan doesn't award herself with what the emperor is going to give her. She awards herself with a symbol of nature and the feminine. And actually the name Mulan means flower. Hua, which is her family name, Hua, Hua is flower and Mulan is actually mag, a wooden magnolia flower. So she actually has a very feminine name. Um, and she doesn't change her name in all through this journey unlike the Disney movie. Um, but she started out leaving the hot house, the safety of her father's house, and now she returns on her own terms. After her soul making journey, she fully steps into the double feminine of her name. She knows what she has done and what she can do. She affirms her basic worth and will not doubt herself. So the yellow flower or the yellow flower powder is a visible sign both to the world and to herself of her own truth. Now she is going ready. Now, only now, is she ready to show herself as she truly is. So next slide. She goes out to see the guys. She goes out to see her comrades. And the ballad tells us her comrades are all amazed and perplexed. And they say, oh my God, Mulan, traveling together for 12 years, we never knew you were a girl. Um, I think this also symbolizes um, her male counterparts will come to see what following the feminine in the strong mode does for all of society because they themselves, her troops, have been renewed and successful. Now Mulan will no longer keep her identity clothed in men's garments in a kind of a masculine warrior persona. She no longer has to reject parts of herself or keep parts of herself hidden. Showing herself to her uh, uh, comrades as a woman reveals her transformed heart. Now in the final lines, we get to the rabbits. These are the final lines in which she addresses all of us. Again, the guys say, Mulan, we never knew you were a girl. And this is what she says to them. She does not say to them, yeah, 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 I told you so. She does not say to them, anything you could do, I could do better. And that's like, Annie, you know, Annie, get your gun. No, this is what she says. The he hair's feet go hop and skip. The she hair's eyes gaze inwardly in contemplation. Two hairs, go to the next slide, running together close to the ground. How can, how can anyone tell if I am he or she? Mulan at this point declares to the world and to herself what she has psychologically acquired. Now I can tell you the symbol of the hair, the meaning of a hair means fertility. And the myth I think uses the symbol of the two hairs of the two rabbits to speak of a new wholeness that Mulan has achieved. 
Um, it is also universally a fertility symbol and also typifies feminine periodicity. So for the myth to use a hair speaks to the feminine that also has acquired new life through the sacrifice of all that she has gone through. She has seen death and come through it into life and into a new life. She has transcended the limiting categories of male and female. Her found self encloses both the masculine and feminine. And the next slide really encloses the yin and the yang of a whole life. I think, we can stay on the slide for a few minutes. I think it Mulan reveals the mystery of a total self from which you will now operate as somebody who has achieved what Jungians would call individuation, her destiny. It is not just luck. There is this wonderful flow between the masculine and feminine energies it works as a whole and the limiting characteristics of male and female have been transcended. I think that um, in, in summary, she tells us the journey of a lifetime towards a wholeness. And I also believe women take many, many Mulan journeys during their lifetime. You just don't take one Mulan journey. You take many, many Mulan journeys. Okay, again and again, we must leave the father's house of the patriarchy where society's mores and shoulds and judgments hold sway, sway. Women especially must equip ourselves with our own instinctual energy, with horse energy, learn how to saddle and control this energy. We must keep near the rushing waters of the spirit, allowing that to keep us on our course, on the journey of our inner hearts, so as not to be dissuaded by critical judgments and doubts that often derail us as women. We must do battle with our fears, and at the end, carefully discern the meaning of gifts from the emperor, from society, because to have accepted the emperor's gift, to accept society's gifts, would have obligated Mulan to be beholden to the demands of the emperor, to the demands of society, or to the demands of um, power structures, okay? Mulan, Mulan now knows it is about having her own life as opposed to the accolades of society. And she takes her next part of the journey on the slow moving camel. For women, we must come to see that it is not about pleasing, but about openness to the present that each day brings. As she takes off her warrior clothes and puts on her old time dress, Mulan lets us know that her ordinariness allows a vulnerability that is at the same time undergirded by great personal strength. The last lines that Mulan speaks declares that who she is has been transformed. She contains within herself and has access to a wholeness that is both masculine and feminine, yin and yang. It is out of this whole self that she is now able to act and to be. Mulan first, Mulan in her journey, first captured by story collectors of fifth century China is alive and I believe speaks to us today. So thank you for that. And now I just wanna show you some pictures really fast of Mulan women. Here is Serena Williams, okay? Practicing, 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 10,000 miles, a long time. Next one is Sally Ride, first American woman in space. Next one is Anne Frank, who died in the concentration camps in Bergen-Belsen in at 15 years old. Here's Dolores, that's, that's fine. Here is Dol Dolores um, Huerta, who co-founded along with uh, Cesar Chavez, United Farm Workers. Okay, here is Maria Tallchief. Now, Maria Tallchief grew up on the Osage in nation. Uh, her father was Osage, her mother was Scotch Irish, and she was one of the most famous um, ballerinas. She lived from 25 to 88, and she had her first ballet lessons in Colorado Springs, where her family used to come for in the summer. 
So I put her in there. The next is Maya Lin, Chinese American architect. Nobody, she's the designer of the Vietnam War Memorial. And when she designed it, nobody knew it was her. And when they found out it was China, she was a Chinese American woman, they called her every name under the sun and said, how could this, and you fill in the blank of these racial slurs, be the person whose um, design was featured to be the Vietnam War Memorial. And it, thanks be to God, it was. And, and she is the builder of that war memorial. Underneath you see Julian Bond. And um, that is um, at the Southern um, Poverty Law Center in Alabama. And it's a water wheel with all the names of uh, people who were died. Well, I mean, the billions of names people have died, but many of the famous ones are in that. The next slide is JK Rowling. She wrote a whole lot of pages before anybody accepted that Harry Potter story, okay? The next slide is Justina Ford. She was Colorado's first African-American uh, woman doctor delivering 7,000 babies. She moved to Denver in 1902. And now her house, that's her house, it's at 3901 California Street and it houses the Black American West Museum. And I don't know if it's open during COVID, but it's a really fun place. Uh, the next slide is um, uh, Rebecca Lobo, whose father was Cuban and her mother was, um, I think po she's Polish Cuban. And she was inducted into the Basketball Women's Hall of Fame. So I just love her. The next slide is Shawnee and Jude Schimmel. They are the Schimmel sisters who were raised on the Umatilla Reservation. And um, one of the things that um, Jude Schimmel said uh, was um, follow your dreams. And she said this to so many young Native American uh, young girls. You can see, see that in that lower um, picture. Um, those girls just loving on her. And she said to them, follow your dreams and don't give up. It's gonna be, gonna be hard. It's not always gonna be pretty, but in the end, you're gonna get what you want if you never give up. So I just I had to put those two sisters in. The next slide is Susan B. Anthony, okay. Um, she became an agent for, in, she became an agent for the American Anti-Slavery Society of course, voting for women's rights. And also there is Elizabeth Caddy Stanton. Colorado women won the right to vote in 1893. And then again, you can see that lovely picture of George Washington saying, did I save my country for this? Okay. And the next slide is, um, I just wanted to uh, honor um, uh, coming, girls coming of age in, in America, that is um, uh, Helen Thorpe's book about uh, four girls who attended the same high school. Uh, and she has been a speaker at the Women's College um, at the University of Denver. Two of the women have uh, legal documentation and two do not. It's a wonderful read. And then the next slide, we have Lorella Perella, United We Dream, and you can see what she has been up to, a true Mulan woman. And I'm going to end with this. I just added this slide last, um, uh, just recently, Su Min. She's from the People's Republic of China. She's 56 years old after being married to a man who was kind of sort of abusive. He beat her with a broomstick, but as he's getting older, he can't beat her too much anymore. He's not very nice to her. She finally bought a little car and took it on the road and said, I want to ask for a temporary leave from my usual life. I can only breathe the air of freedom while driving on the road. One day I made up my mind to live for myself 
holding on to my own destiny. She has now gone viral in China because she just drives all around and she posts her drives on YouTube and women meet her in different towns. Like she's driven to the town of her birth. She drives, she's driven all around China and women have been meeting her with food and with flowers. She has a tent that she purchased, that she puts on top of her car. You can read about her, just Google her. Um, she's all over uh, right now. So that's my last Mulan women. And I think probably I also, and that, oh, and that is, that's a statue that I got when I was in China. This is Hua Mulan in a, um, in the guise of a Peking opera. Operas have been written about her. So she's in kind of a Peking opera costume and that is the signature of her name. So we'll stop with that. We guess we have um, questions for people. Um, and I guess, I don't know if they're in the chat or let me see, I think I can see them. Um, or I guess, Eden, you wanna just ask me questions? Or <laughs> I, I can definitely ask you questions. I'm always curious about things, but I'm waiting for if anybody else wants to ask one. Feel free to unmute um, if you want to, if it makes it easier or if you can write it in the chat. Yeah. But I, I packed a lot. I packed a lot into, <laughs> I'm originally from New York. And so I, I'm sorry if I spoke too fast or, but I wanted, okay. there's a lot to tell you. Yeah, I guess for me, like, how did you get interested in just everything about like what we consider people know the Mulan Disney version of this but this is like also very fascinating because I love opera and it kind of has like the same name to figure out um like what other like what's the history behind something or how a story is made or the legend is well, the, legend, the legend comes from fifth century China so it was nobody knows who wrote it down nobody knows but it was um the way in the United States people were sent by Congress like around Appalachia um, to um, gather stories. Uh, the Empress sent people to gather stories. Mulan probably comes from the area that is now known in China as Mongolia. Because remember, Mulan never had her feet bound. And people in Mongolia, women ride horses. And women, there have been a history of women going into battle. So that's where I think part of that um, has come from. Where it came to me, if anybody wants a really wonderful read, um, Maxine Hong Kingston, the woman warrior, has a um, wonderful book based on her version of Fa Mulan. Fa is the Cantonese, Hua Mulan is the, is the opinion. Um, uh, her version of her mother's telling her the story um, is called um, The Woman Warrior, a girlhood among ghosts. And the ghosts are the ghost stories her mother told you. And the ghosts are about being among white people too. Um, let me see, Did I've got their messages. Um, yeah, we have a few folks that are just saying, thank you for this um, oh, okay. wonderful story and like great needed presentation. Um, yeah. yeah, I just love the history behind it and like diving in really deep yeah. about like, who was, who was Pan Mulan and, right. you know, how when, did- If you go to China today, and partly it's because being part Chinese. So I've gone to China and I've asked people, like I've asked members in my family, my sister's family, tell me what you know about who, Mulan. And they begin to immediately start reciting the opening lines because in China, everybody knows, everyone has to memorize the, the ballad, the song, the poem. It's like Americans long ago would memorize um, the Midnight Ride of Paul Revere mm -hmm. or something, you're, you're all too young. Under the spreading chestnut tree, the village smithy stands. You know, like these kind of, these poems that are in the whatever. Um, and in China, this poem is still memorized today. I think China doesn't, um, realize what a treasure it has. Now I've got, let me see, I've heard so many versions of this legend. People say she was killed. Yes, um, Anna Carolina, I would love to hear, um, I'm gonna put my um, email in the chat 
it's just my last name uh, at gmail.com. I would love to hear um, some other versions. Uh, it says she, there's so many versions. People say she was killed when she was discovered or she was a Tai Chi master. Um, I am working off the original ballad of the po of the original ballad translated into English. There are lots of stories that once the em when she, once she said no to the emperor, she was executed. There are lots of stories that she, her father, the, the current Disney movie, then I think some versions in China have her, oh, her father taught her how to be a warrior and a sword master. Um, in China, there are lots of versions. They've taken this myth and said, oh, you know what happened to her? We're going to make a play. And you know what happened to her? She married the boy next door. That's as good as marrying a cute general. So believe you me, there are lots of different versions. I have gone back to the original um, that the original Chinese and used the English translations of the original ballad. So I don't know if that answers the question. So yeah, there are lots of versions. And you know, China wants, I mean, that that picture that I showed you of um, a real action live version um, that um, they have her kind of like eyeing a cute guy. They don't make it in completely explicit, but it's there in the subtext. Okay. Anything else or should we? Yeah, see if anybody else has any questions or comments um, before we wrap up. I'll wait a, about 10 seconds. <laughs> Yeah, so just thank you um, right. for this wonderful storytelling and in-depth just history about this individual that we knew maybe probably service level to, of, and now we know way more about. So I'm very happy to walk away with some more information. Um, and one person did ask the title for English version you worked from um, for the- It comes, it comes from um, flat, um Flower, it, it just comes from the Ballad of Hua Mulan, translated by Hans Frankel, F R A N K E L. And that is if the person, I think it's called the Plum, it's a collection of Chinese poems by Hans, translated by Hans Frank, Frankel, F R A N K E L. And if they, um, if Want, thank you. And if people want to know more, um, just email me. Um, if they, you know, I would, I'd love to talk with anybody if they have any more knowledge about this or want to continue any conversations. Um, yeah. because this is something I really want to work on. Uh, my secret wish I'll tell all you guys is that this gets published. <laughs> so we do have one more question. I think it's a kind of an interesting question. Yeah, so what do you think about the um, the new movie. And I'm, I don't know if Anna is referring to the one that Disney just came out with with humans or the cartoon version, but I'm assuming the, the human version. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's okay. Again, they do it very subtly, but she's going back to serve the emperor. See, she is an example in China to what a good daughter should be. She saved her country, she saved her father. I think she has also found herself. That's the hidden way down deep part of the myth. So I, I mean, many ways I, I liked the, 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 it was fun. I mean, you know, what's not to like? Um, but again, in the movie, it shows that she's like, she's, her hair is flying. And, and there is, by the way, there is no witch in the original poem. There is no witch. One of my, um, another granddaughter said to me that the Mushu, the dragon or the bird, no, not, not Mushu, the dragon, the bird that accompanied the bad guy um, became the witch. Now that was a tribute to a very, very famous um, Chinese actress, which was kind of fun, but there ain't no witch in, in the real version. I, you, you guys, saw the real version that's that's the real version there's 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 no other translation everyone else everything else i think is just the um the producers um 
you know, th that's, that's um, artistic license. And in many ways, it's okay. I mean, listen, it was produced by a woman. I mean, what's not to like, that's good. You know, she made her kick ass, that's good, but it's not the real version. Okay, Any, anything else? And I think we're good. So okay. again, thank you so much. You're an awesome storyteller. Okay. And I found myself to be oh. very, in oh, does anybody else want to speak up? Sorry, I just had a quick question because I've seen, well, I saw a YouTube interview about just like a general public um, Q&A in China about how um, they're the, in the legend, the girl that is Milan is seen as a bit more masculinized than what the dramatized versions um, are where she's more feminine. And they like criticized uh, like the actress choice because they thought she was very feminine. So I kind of wanted to see your thoughts on that if you've ever come across on oh. that in your research. In the live action? Oh, listen, that poor woman, the live action, she got pulled, yeah. she got raked over the coals in China. Look, if you're and in some sense, um, if you go to look at again that that you can get one of the live action movies in China with in, in Chinese with English subtitles. Um, she got raked over the coals because she started um, a lot of the real action movie was was um, filmed in the area of China where we are saying there are really gulags and basically concentration camps. And when she spoke out about that, she got into a lot of trouble on the mainland of China. So she got criticized for a lot of stuff. Yes, I mean, if you were going on 10,000 miles in the business of war, you would not look so cute and so pretty. And again, long hair flying in the middle of you know, a battle, clearly she's a girl. So yeah, I could see that. I mean, yeah. I mean, and, and also I think there's a little bit of political eh between the mainland of China and the United States. On the one hand, they let Disney come in and, and you know, do a lot of filming. On the other hand, they didn't like it so much. So, you know, that, there's a lot of politics there. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you so much. And I just wanted to say that this was a great presentation. She's like my favorite because I feel like even though I'm Latina and like just seeing her like black hair and like her darker eyes, like as a little girl, I was like, that's that she's being high her as an immigrant. <laughs> yes. And I would love if you want to just send me that quote, quote, as I, I would love to collect that story because I think it is true. My daughter, who is biracial, at, well, she's part white, she's part Chinese, and she's half African-American um, and believe you me, my daughter loved Mulan. And I, I think it did, it gave, it gave little girls, they're not just all these white princesses. And somehow uh, Tatiana never quite, I would have to ask some of the black women in the audience, did they ever believe that that was a Disney princess? But you know, Mulan was. And I've heard that said little um, African-American girls, Jalan, my grandkid, you know, they, they love Mulan, yeah. Yeah, so I, that's a wonderful, that's wonderful to hear. So I don't want to take her away from you. Just know that she doesn't have to get a cute guy at the end. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a great story. <laughs> okay, so enjoy, continue to enjoy your Mulan. Okay. All thank right, you. well, thank you so much. Okay, thank you all. Okay. Have a great evening. All right, you all have a great evening as well. Thank you again. And thank you, Tremaine, and thank you, Eden, so much. Yeah. Really great. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.